Now, when a Red Bull Formula One car launches, it's always a huge point of interest in Formula One pre-season. We know that the team led by Adrian Newey is famed for some clever designs and there's always something going on on the Red Bull that technical experts like Jake Boxall Leg want to look at and talk about. So he's been scribbling all over the images that we've got so far and not much, not too much from Red Bull to look at just yet, JBL, but enough. And I think it's unfortunate they're not racing this livery. We know it's probably going to be the usual boring Red Bull colours by the time we get even to testing. But looking beyond the livery, what can you see on this car that's you know, where do we think Red Bull are trying to make their gains under the new regulations? We know the chassis was superb by the end of last year, so how have they tried to take another step for this year? Well, that's the, as you mentioned, the end of last year. The last two seasons, they've finished very, very well, finished on a high, and then they've come into the new season and the cars looked maybe a little bit underdeveloped here and there, and they've just not hit the ground running as such and then it gets to the end of the season they start doing quite well again so this year they really need to be quick out of the box if they can sort of arrest that kind of slide a little bit and you can sort of see almost here immediately the barge ball section is very very aggressive already you can all see poking through these suspension components all these little uh, protrusions all these little serrations on them and that's essentially managing the flow off of the suspension components and uh, directing it around the side pods. And this front wing as well, um, they've taken a little bit more of a, especially compared to Mercedes as well, they've taken a lot more of a different approach to it. It's more conventional compared to their design. But what you can also notice is um, the inboard section of the top two flaps that curves in very, very aggressively. And then that's just helping the pickup of the, the vortex that's produced here um, and offering a little bit more direction. So obviously they've, like many other teams, have identified that as an area that's very, very important. So they've tried to push that as much as possible. It sort of truncated this third flap inside as well. We've got a very, very standard foot plate on the outside of it as well and outwash end plates. So it's conventional, but it's like the top end of conventional, if you know what I mean, um, compared to other teams we've seen on the grid. As we know, this is going to be an area of intense development. Um, you know, a lot of the wings we've seen so far on the grid probably aren't going to be the final ones. Uh, this is something that they're going to have to work with. Um, so yeah, I think from the front, they've continued to persist with the snorkel crash structure design as well. And looking up, we see this S duct here, which looks incredibly strange compared to the ones we've seen. It's almost, it's got a top flap on it as well. So when the S duct is drawing air from underneath the car and passing it over the top of the chassis bulkhead, it's trying to keep airflow attached because it's a massive section of bodywork and that flap it seems to be then creating another layer of the ambient air that's going over the top and just ensuring that that's attached as well. The Red Bull has always been famed for really tight tiny packaging at the rear of the car and it actually caused a lot of problems between them and their previous engine supplier Renault because tighter packaging places more demands particularly on the internals of your car and poses some reliability risks. So we're all looking quite keenly at this area of the car this time, mainly because of that name that's on the side of it now, Honda. Honda we know have had reliability troubles since their return to Formula One, but is there any sign of any let up from Red Bull? Are they giving them any slack whatsoever in this area? Absolutely not. <laughs> you can see the side pods, they're tiny. And this inlet as well is absolutely, it's, you could barely put a letter through that, I think. You really struggle. It's the smallest we've seen on the grid by some margin. Um, of course, like other teams, they're using a, a larger intake at the top just to ensure that the engine's got the right uh, air passing into it. It's cooling all the an other ancillary components as well. But this suggests that Red Bull and Honda have found something that ensures that they're able to run at extremely tight bodywork, uh, extremely low cooling. And Ironically enough, that's something that McLaren wanted when they started the relationship with Honda in 2015. And this seems to be something that Red Bull have got. Now, obviously, we don't know whether this is going to be the case that this all works and it's all hunky-dory or not. But um, this is such a statement of intent from Red Bull. It's like the, again, it's another example of the Ferrari pioneered high inlet using the uh, crash structures as uh, aerodynamic devices. But Red Bull have just taken that to a complete extreme, haven't they? <laughs> now this image does give us a slightly better angle on some of the bits you were talking about previously, such as the barge boards, and obviously it's our first glimpse at around the rear wing and the rear suspension, and a clear image actually with the floor. 
So what else do you make out from what we can see on this somewhat disguised design? Yeah, definitely. Um, so you, again, you can see these serrations here, and that's just offering a lot more control when trying to bring airflow around the sort of chassis flanks and around the very, very tight side pods. Uh, there's also this very, very large, almost boomerang kind of element here. And that's doing quite a lot of things. It's conditioning air before it gets to those serrations. It's also ensuring that there's uh, a clear flow of air just being tidied up or before it goes around the side pods. And it's also a mounting point for these uh, side pod barge boards as well. Like a lot of teams as well, the mirrors are double mounted for some reason. Um, there seems to be a trend where the mirrors are being mounted very far outboard now. Well, they've been moved for this year, haven't they? Yeah. And I think they've, it's to, there's a part of the rear wing been raised is to try and create some better visibility. It's well known, isn't it, that if Formula One designers could take the mirrors off, they would do it in a heartbeat. And we know that previously when this wasn't as well regulated, we ended up with mirrors out here and they're dangling around and they're no use to the drivers whatsoever. But they're now being treated more and more like an aerodynamic device, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. And again, um, they're sort of double mounted, so it plays into uh, perhaps working some of the airflow just before it gets to the inlet also tying into the um, craft structures used for now for aerodynamic purposes as well. And Red Bull have taken it to a little bit of an extreme, almost developing a bit of a shroud around the mirror, much like in the same way that Ferrari did last year. Um, and then, as you say, moving on to the rear wing, there's uh, a slight sort of strake there. It seems to be a one-piece design, which is uh, a little bit more interesting than some of the other designs we've seen, which are a bit more radical there's not the there's only one wing mount that ties into the drs uh, actuator as well um, from that perspective it seems quite simple compared to some of the other teams we've seen on the grid but again this is another area for development and i highly doubt that that's the fi final package we've got one wing mount as you talk about and that means there's no monkey seat we've seen a lot of the other teams sneaking in a tiny monkey seat there Red Bull during its Renault era was famed for trying to produce low drag cars to kind of compensate for the lack of power. Would the simplicity at that end of the car suggest that they're still working towards that with Honda, certainly at the beginning of the relationship? Well, it seems so, doesn't it? Um, as you say, Red Bull have operated on a very low drag ethos and having extra aerodynamic devices kind of sullies that almost. Um, they're still, you know, even if you have a T-wing or two at the back, that's going to be producing some kind of drag, and that's kind of an excess that Red Bull don't really want. Um, and as you can see as well, the floor, perhaps it's not the fi final finished one, but that one seems quite simple as well. There's a lot less slots and things like that. Uh, the tiny little cuts ahead of the, f uh, the rear tyre just to ensure that the wake is re as reduced as possible, and then that's also reducing drag as well. So it all adds up to another low drag design from Red Bull. We know that Honda probably still don't have the legs on Ferrari and Mercedes or maybe even Renault, we're not entirely sure at this point, but there's still a slight power shortfall. So everything that Red Bull can get out of it, that's what they'll do. Brilliant. Those are JBL's thoughts. And now it's over to our technical illustrator, Giorgio Piola, to find out what he makes of the Red Bull RB15. New Red Bull is uh, for sure the car that we will see at the testing in Barcelona as Mercedes and is again a very interesting car. Uh, it was uh, already some years that uh, Red Bull was not doing something quite radical like this car. And it's very interesting in the, in the few pictures that we, get, we got, uh, the wing quite interesting, a little st uh, step between the, the center section and uh, the normal, the central new, neutral section, the rest of the wing. Uh, the shape of the flaps are quite uh, similar to 2018 car, but immediately we can see that the ten trend is to rise up at maximum possible the lower wishbone of the front suspension, just to maximize uh, the airflow in the inside uh, of the between the ch chassis in the inside the channel made by the chassis and the tire. And the side pods, uh, they had a big, big undercut uh, and uh, different from everybody else, uh, the barge board, they kept uh, the long V-shaped uh, horn, horizontal horn that connected nearly all the barge board till, uh, to the side pods. Uh, and, uh, Again, as last year, the back of the car is very, very, very narrow. And uh, 
with a completely different section of the side pods, let's say in the area of the fuel tank and to the back of the car, with less air going on the uh, on the bottom of the side pods and much more airflow on the top because the shape is uh, more narrow on the top and wider in the bottom. While all all the car the cars in this uh, part. Uh, of the car is a big uh, undercut. Uh, the wing uh, is a single pillar like last year with a U section on top of the of the exhaust and the end plate like uh, the one of the Mercedes are uh, let's say McLaren uh, style and uh, the car kept nearly the same uh, uh, wheelbase and again, the rear suspension has the pull rudder link uh, very push, uh, very going forward, like last year. While Mercedes and Ferrari, there's the pull rudder link uh, quite narrow, and so all the elements of the suspension are more in the back of the car.